must win game two as well to keep their NL Central Division title hopes alive. It's game one, Cole and Waka, and it begins right now on Root Sports. for one of the biggest starts of his young career against the St. Louis Cardinals. Full day of baseball here on the North Shore. PNC Park, game one of the day-night doubleheader. The Pittsburgh Pirates against the first-place club in the National League Central Division. The St. Louis Cardinals, who beat the Pirates on Monday night, so their magic number to clinch is down to two. Quite simply, the Pirates have to win and sweep this doubleheader. Take care of business in game one. Greg Brown along with Bob Walken. It is pretty simple, Bob. The Pirates really have to win out the rest of the way. They play the Reds starting on Friday night in a three-game series. The Cardinals head to Atlanta for a three-game series starting on Friday, but they've, they've got to win out. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of cliches about games like this. Uh, you know, use whatever you want. Back up against the wall. It doesn't matter. Uh, no mistakes. Everything is just kind of laid out on the table in this game. And another thing that you got going for you, though, in this game, every team has a big horse and ace, a guy that can go out there and, and win the important one for you. Well, the Pirates are lucky to have that and, and Garrett Cole. Uh, he's been in these situations before, and he almost always comes through. And right now, he's pitching very well at this point of the season. Yeah, the last four starts have been really good, including that one in St. Louis. And this season, Bob against the Cardinals, 2-1 two and one at 233 ERA. That speaks to what you're talking about. He's a big game pitcher. Absolutely. And that last start against these Redbirds, he gave up no runs, uh, just a couple of hits in seven innings. So right now, his confidence has to be flying to beat these guys. Uh, and, and that's one of the things you like to see from your pitcher, to go out there and really know, be positive that he can win. It's not always about stuff. A lot of times it's about what's up here. All right, he's looking forward to it. We are too. Game one of the day-night doubleheader on the North Shore here at PNC Park. It is Garrett Cole looking for his 19th win of the year, and he'll be opposed by the young right-hander Michael Waka, who is 17 and 6. The Pirates and the Redbirds. Game one of two coming up next.
Sports Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. And by Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Let's go Bucks. Andrew McCutcheon and the Pirates getting ready for game one of this day night doubleheader. Critical for the Pirates to win game one. Garrett Cole comes in and looks and stares down at that St. Louis Cardinals dugout. Looks like a man on a mission. Some serious wow. business for Garrett Cole. Locked yeah, in on that Cardinal dugout. I think he's won the stare down right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. That's some serious business. He knows what is at stake. Everybody knows what's at stake. You have to win this one. And worry about tonight's game at 7.05. But Garrett Cole looking for his 19th win of the year. Jake Arrieta on the Chicago Cubs with 21 wins to lead the major leagues. Cole, Madison Baumgartner, Zach Greinke. The other pitchers in the National League with 18 wins to this point. We check out the St. Louis Cardinals starting lineup for Mike Matheny's club. Matt Carpenter is a 316 career hitter against Garrett Cole. So right away, we'll have a test for the Pirates right-hander. Then it's John Jay and Matt Holliday. Jason Hayward hits cleanup. Johnny Peralta, the veteran shortstop, bats fifth. Mark Reynolds had a big home run the other night. And he's at first base, and it's Colton Wong, Tony Cruz, and Michael Waka. Quick look at uh, Garrett Cole's numbers. Full slate of starts this season. A lot of innings, over 200 this year. Everything uh, looking great. Eighth in the league in innings pitched. Fourth in ERA, 260. And tied for seventh with those 200 punch outs. Here's the defense. So Ramos Ramirez is over at third base with. Jordy Mercer at short, Neil Walker, the second baseman, alongside Pedro Alvarez. Familiar outfield alignment, Marte McCutcheon, Polanco, and Francisco Cervelli catching Garrett Cole. Asking Clint Hurdle if Cervelli might play two games today. He said, we uh, are going to take it absolutely one game at a time. It's possible. He said, I'm not going to commit to it, but let's face it, if Cervelli and the Pirates win game one, then Cervelli is going to play in game two against a left-handed pitcher. So he is ready. As is Garrett Cole. The Cardinals won a very emotional game on Monday night. First pitch swinging and a pop-up. Mercer is out. Called off by Marte. One pitch, one out. There's that first hitter battle that you just mentioned. I mean, both guys. And Cole's going, okay, here it is. I'm going right at you. First pitch fastball. And, and Carpenter is thinking, I'm going to try and uh, make a statement by jumping on first pitch fastball. Rivers Cole Casino wants to win. The Pirates this year have been just outstanding here at home in day games. I mean, absolute fantastic record. Hopefully that will continue today. And, uh, you know, another one of those, you know, back up against the wall type cliches, the goal line defense. But that means more than that. It means play good, tight defense uh, this afternoon. And that's that's really uh, what you would love to see happen. No mistakes, no little errors. Everybody just to use another uh, cliche, do your job. Goal line defense. You're getting ready for the Steelers tomorrow night. Well, right? it's getting into the fall here a little bit. Well, they're so. going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. Playing so Baltimore, just, so. There's a little uh, reference. A little other meaning there, yeah. too. It is getting close to being a little football weather. Two and off, two. feeling like fall. Two and two count on John Jay. did not start on Monday. He did come on to play left field when Stephen Piscotti was injured. And incredibly enough, Piscotti back in the dugout. A little bruised, 
but they think he might be able to play this weekend against Atlanta. Still two and two on John Jay. That was some kind of scary. Scotty colliding with Peter Borges' knee. Yeah, right to, to the face. Very scary. Three and two on Jay. Always seems to battle against Pirates pitching. He's three for nine lifetime against Cole. Lines it right back to second baseman Neil Walker. A bullet, two outs. Allegheny Health Network injury update. Cardinals activate Adam Wainwright off the disabled list. He was placed on the DL in April, injured his left Achilles. Available out of the bullpen. Remainder of the regular season, which ends on Sunday and then into the postseason. So Adam Wainwright might see him actually pitch sometime today or tonight. Out of the pen. Here's Matt Holliday. He just returned a week ago. Just one of the uh, many challenges that the Cardinals had this year. Losing their star right hander right at the beginning of the year. Cole right away wanting to know what was wrong with that pitch 2 0 on Matt Holliday. Yeah, I know the Cardinals are the, the enemy, but you look at their record and you just shake your head and with all the injuries and problems they had that you're just like, how did, how did they do that? We know how Garrett Cole does it. It's a 12 pitch inning. Pirates come to bat against Michael Walker. Let's go down in order in the top of the first inning. And now Clint Hurdle's Buckos team, the Toyota starting lineup, 95 wins for the 2015 Pirates. That's how they stack up. Gregory Polanco, Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, and Ramos Ramirez hits cleanup. And Neil Walker bats fifth with Pedro Alvarez in the sixth spot. Francisco Cervelli, Jordy Mercer, Garrett Cole round out the starting nine against Michael Waka. Take a look at Waka's numbers. Uh, he is uh, obviously having a, a tremendous year, leaking a little oil here down the stretch, though, in September. Hopefully, uh, make a lot of oil this afternoon. Maybe throw a rod right through the block. His fourth start of the season against the Pirates. Six career games, five starts, 3 0, 193 ERA. Gregory Polanco, who's five for nine lifetime against Waka, takes a strike. Ninety-six, zero and two. We 
won't soon forget that game he pitched here at PNC Park. The National League Division Series in 2013 took a no hitter into the eighth inning. Seven and a third no hit innings and the Pedro Alvarez broke up the no hit bid. Game four of the NLDS with a home run. Pretty good command of the fastball so far three in a row almost exactly in the same spot down and away the far corner of the strike zone. And we tried to elevate it a little bit that time well, by the letters. 24 years old from Iowa City Iowa 6'6 210 pounds. First round pick three years ago to Texas A&M. Ground ball to Colton Wong. They definitely uh, set up that changeup with all those fastballs away. His battery mate is Tony Cruz. Yadier Molina is out for the rest of the regular season. Mark Reynolds, Colton Wong on the right side of the infield. Johnny Peralta, Matt Carpenter on the left side. And Matt Holliday is in left. John Jay in center. Jason Hayward in right. Here's Starling Marte. One for four plus a walk on Monday night. Out in front, 0 and 2. Apparently, the game plan uh, early on established that fastball. First two hitters, uh, Walker just coming at him. Oh. Ouch! Came right in with that one. 94 up on the shoulder. On the shoulder, back on the uh, shoulder blade, just underneath the uh, M of his name. He got hit about that same spot earlier uh, in the year. Hurting pretty good. Remember that, Craig? I do. Yes. He even was uh, out a couple yep. of days after that. Let's hope that's not the case here. That can hurt. No doubt he'll be thinking about running. With Tony Cruz behind the plate. Andrew McCutcheon now. 467 lifetime versus Waka. 7 for 15 in the regular season. Strike one right at the knees. Sterling Marte. Second in the league. Hit by pitches. Anthony Rizzo. It's like Rizzo must jump in front of him. 30. Man. Of course, Rizzo, he's got his toes almost on that white line yeah. in front of the box. That'll get you hit every now and then. Rizzo is a member of the 30-30 club now. 30 hit by pitches, 30 homers. Joining Don Baylor. Two and one now on Andrew McCutcheon. Was it? Uh, Ron Hunt for the longest time. Yeah, he used to wear like a flak vest yeah. or something but under his uniform. Yeah. Long time expo Ron Hunt led the league every year. Hit by pitches. Two and one one out. Thinking Marte might be on the move. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a flinch there maybe towards second. Wanting to run. Five steals and eight attempts on the year with Waka on the hill, but again, Tony Cruz solid defensively, but it's hard to uh, stack up against Molina's numbers. And there goes Smart. Oh. He's boxed. How about that? He was picked off, but he Waka box. So the first panic break for the Pirates. Walk a panic when he hears people yelling. 
<laughs> tries to get back. Yeah, like, yeah. You see how he like tried to yeah. move his right foot off at the same time, put the left knot. Sorry, you can't do that. You already moved your left foot. You got to go home. Here's the first runner in scoring position situation. The Pirates were 0 for 10 on Monday night in these situations. That, that kind of proves that your right hand pitchers, they don't really look at the runner. You know, they, they're acting. You can even see his head kind of bobbing up and down, like trying to give the appearance that he was looking at Marte. Well, obviously he wasn't because he had no idea where Marte was. Ball four, first and second. A lot of right hand pitchers that they really never, ever look at the runner. And especially nowadays with the bench calling pickoff throws. In their mind, it's why even look because the bench is going to call the pickoff throw. First time Michael Waka has been called for a balk in his early career. It was an easy one to call. Ramirez, two for six with a home run against Waka, was a pinch hitter on Monday night and lined out. So frustrating on Monday to have all those opportunities inning after inning. The Pirates just could not come up with a big hit. On a strike on Aramis Ramirez. Time is called. Cruz talking things over here with Waka. Marte was very aggressive as that pitch was being delivered. He was hit by a pitch with one out and is balked to second. McCutcheon walks against Michael Waka. Righties hit about 40 points better against him than do left handed hitters. Two and two. Thirty eight career home runs against the Cardinals. And there are the career numbers against Waka. One of those thirty eight dingers. Speed on the bases for Ramirez and the Pirates. Ninety seven. Show a lot of faith in his fastball. Active career leaders against the Cardinals. Ramos Ramirez tops them all. And you see Pedro Alvarez on that list. Two balls, two strikes, two on, one out. And a double play ball. Once again, Cardinals. And the Pirates have a man in scoring position. This time a double play.
this season. Back the 23rd time, which is tied for third. Chick-fil-A double play. Ends up being a very uh, easy turn. At short. Johnny Peralta has hit into 22. And you know Escobar of the Nationals, 24 double plays. Tops the league. Now Ramirez, 23 times. He's hit into the twin killing. Now Jason Hayward. was one for four on Monday. A dozen homers, 56 RBIs. He's not expecting that off-speed pitch one and two. Eric Cole. One, two, three, first inning. Bounce to Alvarez. Keeps it in front. The out. Hayward bounces out to Pedro Alvarez. One away. I'll bring up Johnny Peralta. I think that was Cole yelling, stay with it, stay with it. Fly ball. And McCutcheon calls for it. Johnny Peralta is out number two here. Well, so far, Cole's getting outs in a pretty efficient manner, also. Batting six, first baseman number 12. And you'd love to see that early in a ball game. Your ace out there, not only getting the outs and, and putting up zeros, but doing it uh, where the pitch count stays low. and. Hopefully he can go very deep into the ball game. There's a lot of baseball to be played. A little, uh, little bonus. Get those really quick one pitch outs. He's got two of those. A couple of strikes on Reynolds. Right at the knees. Right at the bottom of the knee. Yeah, that? that's good. For game one, Eric Cooper is the crew chief, and he's calling the balls and strikes. Toby Basner at first, Quinn Walcott at second, Lance Barksdale at third. Again, Alvarez. And another one, two, three inning. On a nine pitch, second inning for Garrett Cole.
Weekend as the Panthers head to Blacksburg, battle of the Virginia Tech Hokies. It all kicks off live Saturday at noon on Root Sports. UPMC scoreboard. Nothing, nothing. Go to the bottom of the second inning. Out here, Molina. That uh, injured thumb. He was back in St. Louis on Monday, checking out uh, that thumb with a hand specialist, and they have determined he will not play his right thumb? this week. Uh, I think it's his left thumb. Left, left thumb. Yeah, pretty sure it's his left thumb. Yeah, he did it while he was applying a tag at home plate. Oh, yeah. He can't catch with a bad left. Right thumb, I mean, you, you don't really use that to give signs with. It's on your fingers. Neil Walker trying to exploit one of the weaknesses. The Cardinals don't have many, but Matt Carpenter, bad right shoulder, trying to suggest to some players that uh, they have an opportunity. Go ahead, bunt toward third. Carpenter was back a bit. Now one and two on Neil Walker. One for four and a walk on Monday night for Neil Walker. He's hitting 283 against the Redbirds this season. Pedro Alvarez. See how they approach Alvarez. They didn't want to pitch to him at all on Monday. He has had strong numbers throughout his career, regular season, postseason against the Redbirds. Is off. Nope, no swing. Walker Alvarez Cervelli here in the second. Another look on the Allegheny Health Network Super Mo. Drive to right. Jason Hayward's going to watch this one. Clear the deck. Cannonball coming. The real deal is the box a 1 0 lead in the second. Second home run that Waka has allowed against the Pirates in the regular season, covering 34 innings. The house. What a great feeling that has to be for Neil Walker. You think about how big this game is to be able to get up there and, uh, and come through. So many fans, obviously, here for a number of different reasons. Loving the fact that. Pittsburgh guy hit it out. I believe this was a fastball. Yes, it was. 96. I wasn't sure if it was a fastball or change up. Knew the location was right there, but Walker able to jump and turn on that 96. Sixteenth home run, and there it is. Keepsake. For a young Bucko fan. Yeah, Neil Walker home run in the uh, most important game of the year to date. That definitely will be a, a keepsake. The dog won't get that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Walker off of Waka. was talking earlier about uh, Waka leaking oil a bit lately last well, three starts five innings five innings six innings gave up three runs his last time out in five innings of work four runs against the Cubs at Wrigley over five innings and the long ball Derek Lilliquist looks on. And really great. The Cardinals as a team haven't been the same right. in this month of September. A broken bat foul. No, that's true. They have. They've been, they've been the you know, first five months of the season. They were an absolute machine. It almost looked like nobody could ever beat them. But it hasn't been like that in September. See the last three starts. And 
Six home runs now allowed in the month of September. Of the 18, he's given up all year. Six have come this month, including that one by Neil Walker. A rare offer for Francisco Cervelli on Monday night. Did draw a walk, so he reached base in one of his plate appearances. Sixteen on the year for Neil Walker, and now seventy runs batted in. Missing a couple of times with the off-speed pitch. Walker hits the fastball out. That was ninety-seven, and. So often the case with Francisco Cervelli, he battles John Lackey. Guy that has helped give the Cardinals get them to this 99 win season. Still three and two on Cervelli. Yeah, early in this game, it looks like the only pitch that that Walker really trusts as far as control is that fastball. And he's been missing with a lot of the off speed stuff. And he gets him to chase a pitch up and away. Ten pitch at bat ends with a strikeout. We want to see your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag hit data strong fan and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. Walker gets his first strikeout of the afternoon. Pirates leading one to nothing on the Neil Walker homer. I'm Jordy Mercer. Who also went hitless on Monday, 0 for 4. Now Mercer has been. Hitting the ball much better the last couple of weeks. The last eight games hitting 323. This season against the Cardinals, it's been a struggle. Hitting under 200 against St. Louis. No, he's not alone. Uh, the Cardinals have one of the better pitching staffs in, uh, in all of baseball. There's a lot of guys that uh, haven't hit the Redbirds very well this year. But what about the, the thing about Mercer is that second year in, his, in a row he started slow. And, and then when he got hit hitting a little bit he ended up getting hurt. And that really has messed up his year long numbers. Neil Walker hit his 16th home run of the year. Over the Clemente wall. Here's the Bucks a one nothing lead. Heading to the third.
during a pennant chase. I'm Robbie Smikowski here on the North Shore. Jung Ho Gung saw his teammates on Monday for the first time in person since he was injured uh, before the last road trip. But thanks to him fiddling with Neil Walker's cell phone earlier, he was able to see them on the telephone. When the season started, Gung showed Walker an app he used to talk to his family and friends back in Korea that doesn't use up any data. So he loaded it on Walker's phone and would randomly, randomly dial him up from Pittsburgh just messing around after ball games. Won the last trip, Walker returned the favor. When they were in Chicago after their win on Friday, Walker initiated a call with Gung on that same app and walked him all around the locker room to say hello to his teammates, all for the first time since the injury. The guys had a blast seeing Jung, Yo and, uh, Jung Ho and said his spirits were very good. And let's just say that Walker, Greg, had a good time with it. He brought Gung to every single part of the clubhouse and the goofiness, let's say, lifted Gung's spirits just a little bit more. And I think uh, everyone's spirits... Robbie were lifted when they actually saw Gong the other day. He made his way in with his parents. Neat, though, that uh, just another example of how Pirates really brought Gong into the clubhouse from day one. Spring training down in Bradenton made him feel accepted. How important he is to this Pirates team. Especially true if you look at Gung's numbers this year against the Cardinals. And well over 300 against them. It's one team that uh, they hit well against a lot of clubs, but especially against St. Louis pitching this year. And right back to Garrett Cole. Colton Wong is retired back downstairs to Robbie. And remember we were talking about the get well card that Christian Hurdle brought to Jung Ho Gung, the first one that he received. Well, today we looked at his locker and that is what was there. A basket full of get well cards waiting for Jung Ho. He obviously, as you can see, hasn't gotten to any of them yet. And I saw the incoming mail today and there were even more coming in. We gave out the address during a game from Coors Field in Denver last week. And uh, Clint's son started a big wave of get well cards coming Jung Ho's way. What a great show of uh, support from not only his teammates, but also the fans of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Great stuff to see that basket laying there. I don't know how long it's going to take Jung Ho to get through all of them, but I'm sure he'll have a smile on his face, Greg. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, Pirate fans, talk about accepting a player. The Pirates fans just absolutely fell in love with Jung Ho Gong this year. And anxious to see him back again next season. Balls foul. Very close. Yeah, really uh, one of the... Uh, Jersey tops that you see the most around here is uh, is Jung Ho's. It's really been, uh, I think, awesome and kind of a story of the season about uh, the way that the, the fans just have fallen in love with him and just a, a great guy, a great competitor. Goes hard all the time and has uh, put up a lot of uh, a lot of big hits on the season. Pirates would not be where they're at right now without him. Tony Cruz. Two and two. Cole got Colton Wong to bounce back to the mound to start this third inning. He's got a two two count on the catcher, Tony Cruz. It's a piece of Cervelli. Eric Cole motioning to a trainer. Matt Potenziano. That draw some blood. Clipped him on the ear, maybe. How did that happen? Hit in the air. Never seen anybody get get a hit more. No, that's a he is absolute magnet. Yeah. Like in all these years, I don't ever remember seeing 
somebody get hit in the ear and, and have it you know hit so hard that it basically broke open. Francisco Cervelli hanging in there. Wants Caracol to throw a warm up. Two and two on Tony Cruz. Well, to center. McCutcheon back and with some room. Not much, but enough. No problem, man, at all. What? Tony Cruz flirting with his second home run of the year. Two outs, and now Michael Waka sitting 157. Hashtag Bucks Booth if you have a question or a comment. Oh, and two on Waka. Don't even mess with him now. I got two strikes. Put him away with one pitch. Strike three and uh, get the dugout. Tapper, no top. No, that's all right. Still one more pitch. That was it. Nine up, nine down for Garrett Cole. One nothing Bucks. Head to the bottom of the third. Pirates Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Crews and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. Pirates lead 1 0. Our Day Automotive this day in Pirates history. Neil Walker providing the home run over the Roberto Clemente wall this day in 1972. So Clemente is 3,000. That final career hit of John Matlack. Let's beat the Mets 5 0. Historic day is 3,000 and his final hit of his career. And on this day in 1972, as of course, Roberto Clemente would be tragically killed on New Year's Eve that year. Strike on Garrett Cole. Oh, 
to see Carrot hit one out this afternoon. Right? Oh, that was the pitch. It's right there. Well, maybe that's not the pitch for him. Two in a row, he didn't even foul off. Waka has struck out three straight. Sometimes I think Cole gets more upset about his hitting than he's well, pitching. How often do we ask whether a player takes a bad offensive day out to the field with him? <laughs> Ray Searage trying to get Cole back into the game. Yeah. <laughs> He'll like, okay, that's okay. you're done now. Right. Nothing you can do yeah, that. Worry you, about your hitting. You, know, you, cha off. you chased a bad pitch. Yep. It's okay. Now concentrate on the fielding. <laughs> uh, in your case, the pitching. <laughs> he does uh, take that hitting part very seriously. Gregory Polanco bounced out to Colton Wong in the first. Hitting 379 against Cardinals pitching this year. Two and two. For his career, which is less than two years now, hitting 350 against St. Louis. Four straight retired via the strikeout for Waka. Well, this can't be you know, where Waka wants this ball, but it turned out okay. I don't think he ever tried to nip the uh, the letters with a curveball, but it worked in this case. Got the call up there. Looking where Cruz was, it looked like they were going to try a little backdoor curveball down and away, try to get him to take that for a strikeout pitch. Keep working on trying to get that breaking ball over. Starting to do that. It looks like the uh, the game plan early on for a lot of fastballs. Second time through. Now going off speed. His command wasn't very good off speed when he did throw some the first time through the lineup. Seven, one and two on Marte. I wonder if there was any scenario to where, at some point in a in a postseason game, let's say the Cardinals do go deep into the month of October, that Wainwright would ever start. You know that it is it is a rehab type games. He's had to throw a lot of pitches. One, two, three. Michael Waka, one nothing. Pirates through three innings.
great shots from the Allegheny Health Network Super Mo to the sounds of Honey coming to stage AE October 12th. And a bullpen that now includes Adam Wainwright. Coming back from the Achilles injury in April. I was just thinking, Greg, there's got to be some kind of a scenario, I mean, plan B, plan C, where they think that, you know, they could get him to where he could start. You know, in the uh, the practice games, whatever you want to call them, that he's been pitching in, you know, he, they, they've worked his pitch count up. And just the same kind of way that we did with AJ, even though there was no rehab places to send him, you can still at least get the exercise in that you would get with several innings. It's not the same. But what, you know, veteran older guys like AJ, obviously it doesn't really matter. I wonder, now with Wainwright, you're, all, you're not talking... Uh, what six seven weeks you're talking about four months or so Been there before in terms of the bullpen closer in 2006. Beat the Tigers in the World Series, closed it out. Adam Wainwright. Kind of a, a little. Uh, uh oh, the other way, just foul. A little mental boost having him back. Yeah, in, I think? think so. We talked about the way their September is. They haven't been as dominant as they were the uh, the whole year. Another reason for the uh, the Pirates to try and push the push it off as far as they can, even maybe all the way to the uh, the last day or whatever, them clinching, so that they don't have any. Mm -hmm. Any free games to where they can try this, try that, to maybe get Wainwright extra innings. Carlos Martinez on your right, push, out for the rest of the season. Push it all the way to the end. Make every every game something on the line. Jaime Garcia to his right on your left. Uh, that one could have went either way. I might see a swing sign on that one. Still getting box. It's a ball. You know? Only if you swing and miss are you allowed to leave the box. Isn't that right? Line toward right. Gets down. Carpenter into second base with a double. A leadoff double here in the fourth. The first hit for the Cardinals. League leading 43rd double for Carpenter. He had a little uh, bit better bounce off the scoreboard. Looks like Polanco goes over, gets himself in, in position that maybe hold it to a single, but the ball hit the chain link and then just died. Didn't get much of a bounce off the wall. John Jay bunts. Nobody at third. Cole gets the runner, the batter runner. John Jay sacrifice. John Jay bunts him to third. Well, sometimes you play for one run and get get more. I, I've always liked that play where, you know, whatever you have to do, get that runner to third with one out, whether it's lay down a bunt. A lot of times you'll try to just you know, hook a ball to that side of the infield of your left hand hitter. But doesn't matter. Move them over. Now the infield has to come and play in. A lot of this comes from the pitcher's viewpoint. They, they hate this scenario. The infield in behind you. We saw our barrel automotive league leaders that 
Carpenter now tops in the National League with 43 doubles. So scored 96 runs. It's tied for fifth in the league. Ninety-nine from Garrett Cole, trying to strike out Matt Holliday. Carpenter's really coming down the line in an aggressive manner. All of his weight on the balls of his feet, leaning toward home. Fastball, two and two on Holiday. You, you almost have to do that if you're going to try and score on a you know, go on contact. But I always think that makes you a little vulnerable to the uh, you know catcher picking you off. You're almost leaning toward the plate as that ball is hitting the catcher's glove. And if you're off there a long ways. Go in the dirt. No. Three and two. Matt Holiday just back off the DL. A couple of different long stints because of the right quad injury. Six for 12 in his career against Garrett Cole coming into this game. One time draft pick of the Colorado Rockies. Brown ball, base hit 1 1. With the infield in, Holiday singles to center. Tied at 1. the example of why you hate to have that in filled in. It's just kind of a weak routine ground ball but not much time for the uh, infielders to move sideways. It's got to be hit pretty much right at them. If it's not you get that e easy cheap hit. So now not only do you get a run now that there's another runner on base that's why playing for one run doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're going to end up getting. It can create other opportunities. Driven deep to right by Hayward. Just foul. He must have known it was foul the whole way because he didn't run. So he doesn't, he just barely moves. He knows it's foul. Obviously, he didn't have, the, have any distance. That's the way you're supposed to do that. Walker did the right thing. Stop the runner, get him going back, be a little flat footed, then get the quick out at first base, and then get the uh, the other guy now on a rundown. Not sure what happened on the throw. On the throw back to second. It looked like uh, something screened Mercer from seeing the ball, didn't it? I think Jordy thought the ball was going to. Look at this. He kind of looks as though he can't see it. You think uh, did Neil have just a little extra time where he could have gotten Holiday's momentum going a little bit more? But that did, yeah, he could have, but that wouldn't have made any difference in the play. I mean, they still should have got an easy out. At, even the way it was done should have been an easy out at second base. A 
there's nothing there that that showed that said you shouldn't have got an easy out at second base. I mean Neil did his job correctly. He got clipped in the year again. Same spot. Player in the right for a hit. Holiday waved the throw to the plate. Oh, look at that rifle arm. You don't run on El Cafe. Gregory Polanco nails Holiday at the plate. The Cardinals try to take the lead on the hit by Peralta. Gregory Polanco says no. Singled in the tying run. Moved to second on that bouncing ball. And then was waved home by Jose Okendo. But Gregory Polanco picks up his league leading 12th assist from right field. It's been the uh, best in uh, best right fielder in baseball throwing guys out this year. Tremendous arm. And this ballpark really helps him out because it's got that short porch and he can cheat in a little bit also. So tough to score from second base uh, with him out in right field. No contest. Uh, Cervelli had all day to make that catch. Now, now Andrew McCutcheon. Singles make, to center. Make that tag, I mean, after the catch. Just the second hit. The other was the home run by Walker. Touch it walked in the first inning. Let's see, Starling Marte leads everyone, but now from right field, Gregory Polanco leads the National League. Jay Bruce were tied among right fielders at the start of the day. Well, Ramos Ramirez looking to make up for that inning ending double play in the first. Oh. 
Got that bat out of there quickly. Didn't want the, uh, the old off the knob foul ball. Mark. And now it's three and zero. Oh. Not anything close this at bat. The home run hitter on deck. Ball four and first and second with no one out. The second walk for Michael Waka, two aboard. Pirates would love to come back and get that run back at least here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Eric Cole still stewing over, over that run. Yep. Walker let off the second inning with his 16th home run of the year. Here it is again. He caught a fastball, a perfect spot right over the inside half of the plate. Perfect spot to pull out of the ballpark. Same spot that he hit the home run. Inside half, mid thigh. He was able to jump on this one. A little too quick. Melanchus 0 and 2 on Walker, who hit the home run. In the second to give the Pirates a 1 0 lead. It was his first home homer since August the 20th. See, I guess that change up there, you'd almost bet the ranch that after you jump on that fastball for a home run, then pull one really hard. Had to pull the string, and that's what he did. Chopper. And a play much like we saw in the top half of the inning, but. Aramis Ramirez somehow eludes the tag of Colton Wong. So he is safe and it's second and third. There's a double play ball that the Cardinals aren't able to turn. There's a is one of those laces that loose in the air? Does that count as part of the glove? It does, yes. I think a lace might have touched it. Watch the lace. I don't know. Inconclusive. Yeah, that certainly didn't show it. We were talking to an umpire recently, a few weeks ago, about the very subject that the umpire is a little bit concerned that these gloves that have the long laces, laces dangling that a postseason game is going to be come down to something like that. Well, you'd hope not. There has to be some kind of a rule, too, on how long the laces are. Is this lace touching? Oh, yeah, the lace did touch it. Throw a pitch. <laughs> yeah. Good. It doesn't matter now. They intentionally walk Alvarez to face Francisco Cervelli again. This was 
what they were doing all on uh, Monday night. Every chance they got, they worked around Alvarez, including Mike Matheny ordering an intentional walk, as he's doing here. It's because of the damage that Alvarez has done, even though he's just one for 13 in his career against Waka in the regular season. He did hit that home run October the 7th, 2013, that broke up the Waka no-hit bid here at PNC Park. And Cervelli will try and foil that strategy. You know, I wonder if they're, you know, they're kind of what they're thinking about, too, is that, well, Cervelli is more likely to hit that single, and that's going to knock in a couple of runs if he does. But if Pedro catches one and hits it out, it's a grand slam, and that's four instant runs. Three inch runs, I'm sorry. I take that back. Ball one. Had a 10 pitch at bat in the second inning, but struck out against Waka. Francisco Cervelli, they want him back out. How about the way he jutted that hand up in the air just now? He, he just has a flyer for yes, that sort does. of stuff, doesn't he? Alvarez and he hits the grand slam. I knew that there was a grand slam involved in something. I, mean, I, just, I was just obviously confused. Cervelli was going to hit the grand slam. Change up. Yep. Sweet it is. See Holiday kind of just jogging back. He knew. Watch Andrew McCutcheon react. Gosh, that is so huge. Look at that scoreboard. Five to one now. A big, big game. Game changer. Here Cole. Watching the Cervelli. Granny. And then a walk to Mercer. Take another look at Francisco Cervelli. The Allegheny Health Network Super Mo and a super swing. Cole going to try and punt Mercer to second, takes ball one. Go back, go back. 
But the just the year Cervelli has had stepping in here with his huge uh, shoes to fill. Russell Martin. It's his seventh home run. Is what he has done uh, offensively and behind the plate. Talk about a popular guy in the clubhouse, also. Even with a bloody ear. Yeah. The, the yeah. things that he can do. It is. The, the ear right now, he, he doesn't even know what happened. He right. didn't remember it. It's gone now. Bunts the ball to Reynolds, so not able to get the runner over. Blanco has bounced out and struck out looking. went 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position on Monday night. They were 0 for 1 in this game until or 0 for 2 until the grand slam by Cervelli. Center field gap. Jordy Mercer is off and running with two outs. Sofield going to wave him home. The throw to the plate is late. Polanco caught between second and third. He will be out, but he will get credit for an RBI double. It gives the Buckos a 6 1 lead. Jordy Mercer scores on the double. Everybody scores on a grand slam. Take a 5-1 lead. Gregory Polanco's double makes it 6-1. Polanco has had his struggles on the bases. Does deliver the double. A big time hit. You know, I defended him getting uh, thrown out at third the other night. But these are the kind of things that make it 
make it an issue when I mean that's just throwing a giving them an out. There's no reason to even try to get the third there. I mean what, what's the what are you getting out of it. There's already two outs. You're one of the fastest guys on the field today. You're going to score from second. But it was a nice hit. <laughs> one out. <laughs> It was a nice hit. Look at it. I know. The it's great a beautiful hit. hit. But like, <laughs> then it's not so beautiful. Like, like right now, throw the brakes on. Second? Yeah. I mean, go. There's no reason to go to third there. Or try it. Like, it's funny because you know, you round the bag and watch, see what happens. The throw gets away or something. Then go to third, but you can't make that last out there. See if they can get it out here. Marte, it's Mercer. Hits the ground. Marte calls for it. Two outs. But with Polanco, you don't want. It's weird because you don't want to take away too much. They you like the aggressive play. No, that's play. why I said I, I yeah. defended him. But that was a. It was that play the other night where he tried to go to the third base with, on the ground ball to short with nobody. He thought he was going to beat Carpenter, and I can understand that. And I guess you can argue both sides of that. Whatever it, you know. It wasn't an automatic right. where you don't go right. because the ball's hit. And, and that's that the kind side of, for me, I, that's what you're talking yeah. about. I don't want to take his aggressiveness away from, from trying to make plays right. with his legs. That's part of what he brings to the table. But then there's other times where it's, hey, you know, you gotta you got to slow down a little bit. you got to know what the score is, how many outs there are. You know, when do you take a chance, when do you don't take a chance? When, when is it worth trying to push the envelope and get that extra 90 feet? And the, it's, it's all about the risk reward when it comes to, right down to it. That's, it's as simple as that. And deep to center, McCutcheon can't make the catch. And Tony Cruz into second base. Cruz sent McCutcheon back toward the wall. His first time up. Must have thought that he was closer to the wall than he was. He had a little bit further to go, and uh, might not have had to, to jump like that. Matt Adams will pinch hit for Michael Waka. Adams recently off the disabled list. Miguel Sokolovich is going to be coming on. Michael Waka. Another short outing for him. Not a lot of command. I mean, that fastball is okay, but off-speed pitch couldn't really throw for a strike. It really when he wanted to, and there was a couple of uh, off-speed pitches weren't located. I'm sure where he wanted to, like that uh, changeup and went for the grand slam home run. He walked four one intentionally, gives up the six runs in four innings. Oh and two on the pinch hitter Adams. Rips it foul. Two hits on Sunday, started at first base. Missed 91 games with a right quad injury that required surgery.
fouls off a couple of fastballs from Cole. Nine in the count, 0 and 2. Cole trying to put him away. Speed the bat up, making vulnerable to an off speed pitch. Hit in the air to left center. McCutcheon. That'll do it. Adam flies out. Cole and the Pirates lead 6 1. Behind a one-hit masterpiece from the reigning NL MVP, the L.A. Dodgers clinched their third consecutive NL Western Division title with an 8-0 win over the Giants last night at AT&T Park. Clayton Kershaw fanned 13 Giants and became the second pitcher in MLB history to throw a shutout of one hit or less in a division-clinching start. Now back to Greg and Bob at PNC Park. All right, Rob, thank you. It's kind of funny the uh, telecast uh, put a graphic up there. It's a National League champions. They didn't include the West. If they were trying to predict something. I guess. Every now and then there's a boo boo. You know. Not here. You're talking oh. about out there. Yeah. Marte. Roller foul. Notice we have crickets now in the trailer. <laughs> Nothing. Well, it's like the boo boo I made. I said they were walking, uh, walking Pedro because they didn't want to give up a grand slam. Right. Similar type deal, you know. It's, we all sometimes uh, don't have the right gear engaged when the clutch is let out. Marte, McCutcheon, Ramirez as they chase the starter Waka. Just hope you don't bend a valve. Now that would be a lot of fun. So far, Cervelli and Walker have been part of this afternoon party. Nice play on the big and safe at first. Close play. Mike Matheny will have his video coordinator take a closer look in the clubhouse. And now checking. Slipped a bit. 
He's going to be safe. Hopefully safe. I'll check on the pitcher in the meantime. We're concerned about uh, maybe a groin pull there. Checking and not so sure. The groin or kind of the quad? Maybe, maybe a quad. The way he was kind of yeah. tapping it. Uh, and now he's trying to, to run on it a little bit. You know, that's kind of odd. I've never seen anybody didn't run after they threw a couple pitches to then run it because you're not going to say, oh, it hurts, and then, well, run on it. And they say, oh, yeah, it is fine. Never mind. Well, the pitching is what decides, not whether you can run on it. What's happening here? He's staying in the game. Pass the, uh, the pitching test and the jogging test. Walked and singled. Here goes Marte, taking for a strike. Not close. Really figure like you can take advantage of Tony Cruz, and in this case. Kolovich. In this case, it's not even remotely close. That was a fastball right down the middle. Cruz has caught just two. 19 this season. Seven of 42 the last two years. That was a nice uh, job by Cut showing some patience there. Yeah. Taking that pitch, letting Marte steal the base. Marte with number 30, by the way, on and the year. A lot of times, Kutch doesn't see a lot of good strikes to hit, and that was one right down the middle, but he did the right thing. He let it go, knowing that it's better for everyone if he's hitting with a runner in scoring position. So take the strike. They get to hit with somebody at second base instead of first. Strikeout. Bucks and Reds meet starting this Friday night, 705 first 20,000 fans get a Pirates t-shirt compliments of service link. Enjoy food, live entertainment, and the line in Kugel Bar before the game at the Friday night block party on Federal Street. It's presented by Barrel Automotive. For tickets, go to pirates.com slash free shirt Friday. Dress for the occasion. Yep. I don't know. That 
might be a bit extreme, but not yet. Get it there. there. That's better. Last day of September. We should have wore some pirate hats today. One thing I don't think we've ever done. Dressed like a pirate. Have we? I don't think so. Maybe this weekend. Dress like a parrot. Two and one on Aramis Ramirez. One of the four walks allowed by the starter, Michael Waka. He was able to get Ramirez to hit into a double play in the first. Mike Matheny's Cardinals a win away from 100 victories for the season and a National League Central Division title if the Cardinals can beat the Pirates today or tonight. Peralta, the second out. home run get the Bucks on the board in the second inning 16th the right field wall made it one nothing the Cardinals tied it on a base hit by Matt Holliday in the fourth but a Francisco Cervelli grand slam and Gregory Polanco double getting the Pirates this 6-1 lead now home runs tied for the second most single season dingers for Neil Walker who set a career high last year when he hit 23 it gives you a little extra pop from that second base position Now with 70 RBIs, drove in 76 last season. Now Sokolovic trying to uh, strand that runner. Marte reached second with nobody out. Nice job. Did a real nice job with some uh, off-speed stuff down. Gets some chases on uh, uh, Walker and uh, and Cut.
Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Just ask a neighbor. And by Levin's, the official furniture and mattress supplier of the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! 6-1. Pirates lead the St. Louis Cardinals. This division has been sensational all year long. Pirates, the Cubs and the Cardinals, the top three teams in baseball, and folks skipping school to see this game, and some traveling hundreds of miles to, to see the game. Those Mets I think that's a scout. The East. Maybe. That's a scout there in the States. They usually don't wear the jerseys. You see a lot team. of scouts yeah. out this time of year. He's got his credentials around his neck. Checking out the competition. Driven deep to right field. Hook. And that ball sails toward the river. Matt Carpenter hits his 28th into the Allegheny. A solo blast for Matt Carpenter. What a year. It's pretty amazing. You know, he's. Not this real big guy, kind of slide a belt if you, you know, look at it, slender looking. And, but he does pack a lot of power. Makes it a 6 2 game. Headed up the middle. Walker. Nice little play there, and a nice pick by Pedro Alvarez on the other end to retire Jay. Two very good jobs there. Walker and Pedro doing the good work. It's the home run once again. Bouncing into the river. Yeah, there's a, after all that rain, there's a little everything. In the yeah, river. I'll say. Be a baseball. Nice play on John Jay going far to his right. Stuck right up in the palm. Nice little pick up on the other end. Lean on his hands and rolls to Mercer. Well, the Reds will be the team that comes in this weekend in the final regular season game Sunday is Fan Appreciation Day. 3:05, first pitch. All kids 14 and under get eye black to wear. Compliments of Chick Fil A. The number one Cochran Family Fun Zone takes place before the game. Out on Federal Street, fun activities. And after the game, kids can run the bases courtesy of the original pizza logs. Go to Pirates.com for tickets. Hopefully get some eye black up here. That's always fun. I am going to make certain that you and Tim both have eye black for your Good. game on Sunday. Got to have it on those day games. Take away the glare. Use it for the lights here. Yeah, it would be good for that. Where are we? Uh, where they are a little bit difficult to see the camera. Is it Denver? There's three or four spots. Well, most recent road trip. Most recent would be Denver, yeah. yes. Um, Could use them for Denver. The Mets, not easy. And a base hit. Jason Hayward. Use the eye black in San Francisco also. Hayward gets just a ground ball single. Well, Johnny Peralta.
one two. Peralta opposite field single in the fourth. With Matt Holiday at second. Gregory Polanco threw out Holiday at the plate to keep the game tied at one. In the dirt. Believe it or not, that is his first strikeout of the game. He leads 6 2. Perfect song for the occasion. Santa Sonia, blow me wide open. Having to stage AE. It's over the 11th as the Cervelli home run. Maybe didn't blow the game wide open, but a good start. Point Park University tweets on the Cervelli home run. The grand slam, the second of his career, first as a pirate. That's hit well toward right center field. Over is Hayward for out number one. For the crowd, Francisco Cervelli. That's some more. Eh? Start calling you Dino. <laughs> you got a, a, a perfect song, perfect walk-up music for that moment. Yeah. With the crowd and yep. everything. No doubt. First grand slam by a Pirates catcher since. May of 2011, Ryan Doman hit a granny of then Padres pitcher Clayton Richard. Gives him seven home runs, 43 RBIs for the season. Cole, not a happy person today. Another way and foul. Talking to Michael 
Morse. He's talking about hitting, isn't he? I wonder, so, though, is he, is he talking about what hitters do? To I, hitter? I don't know, but he's definitely talking about a swing or something. That's what it looks like. Maybe trying to. Probably talking about Carpenter. If he's not yeah. talking about his own hitting, it's got to be yeah. Carpenter. Oh, smoke to center field. Over the head of John Jay. One out double for Cervelli. Blistered that ball. Have a day. Then later on, have a night. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> have a he day is, and a night. He is really seeing the ball well. I, uh, when John Jay first started out this, I think he thought, okay, I've got to move to my right. Then after about three steps, realize, uh oh, i got to peel backwards because this ball is hit hard and it's going to be well over my head. The route that he took to that ball probably is going to look like a Jay. Now with six hits. I love spaghetti meatballs and Francisco Cervelli. That's Amore. Mercer walked following the Cervelli Grand Slam. Base hit can get it going a little bit. Right? Get him back in a better mood. Yeah. A line drive uh, out the center field. There's a base hit in the center field. Here comes Cervelli. He will score. Jordy Mercer makes it 7 2. Slams and line drives to center field. Yeah. Well, this is certainly a line drive to center field. For a moment there, I thought he'd hit it too hard. I was wondering if Cervelli would be able to score on it. Pirates can certainly take advantage of a that John Jay didn't throw well. No, not at all. Got a couple outfield arms there that uh, they can exploit and. Cole was unable to get a bunt down earlier in this game. He'll do it here. Sacrifice three four. Three failed to run a uh, move a runner in the fourth. The Reds again are coming to town starting Friday night, the middle game of the series. After the games and belly fireworks show. Following the 705 game, everybody always takes home great prizes on an Eaton Park scratch and win Saturday. And remember, all fans will receive a 2016 Pirates Magnetic schedule this Saturday, thanks to PNC Bank. Or tickets go to Pirates.com. Work to be done, but we're hoping that this weekend still very meaningful in the scheme of things. Pirates have to win out every game, critical. Doing their part in game one. They still have not secured home field advantage in a wild card. 
It looks really good, but not mathematically secured. Kind of like how the Cardinals are feeling right now about the division. Same, same kind of scenario. Pirates' mantra right now is just uh, Al Davis. Just win, baby. The rest of the way. Don't think about the scoreboard anymore. No, the, the team that they would be watching is sitting in the other dugout. So yeah. Don't worry much about that. Even when it comes to this weekend, if they win t tonight, well, today, yeah, and tonight, right. just keep winning. It doesn't, doesn't make any difference. Right. The Cardinals do. Now it's 3 0 on Polanco. Mitch Harris getting ready. Mike Bethini might let Sokolovic just face Polanco here. And we'll see if he doesn't bring on a right hander to face Marte. Sokolovic walks his first. Three pitches, second most thrown by Sokolovic in the big league since June. And then he won outing, so he is definitely running out of gas. Marte reached on an infield single last inning and stole second. It back to the pitcher. Pirates get one. Cervelli doubled. Mercer brought him home, and Garrett Cole has a five run lead. Some off field fun as they fly to Colorado dressed up as their favorite superheroes. That and more on Inside Pirates Baseball, presented by Allegheny Health Network tonight after Pirates post game on Root Sports. No question who that man is. Seven two Pirates. Heading to the seventh inning. Sean Rodriguez now at first. Garrett Cole faces Mark Reynolds leading off for St. Louis. He's bounced out twice. Bob, how about this? Garrett Cole only has two swings and misses in this ball game. And we mentioned that 
He ended the six with his first strikeout. That's the latest in his career. He's gone before punching out an opponent. Previously, it was the third inning. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. A good thing, though, is he's only thrown 84 pitches. Certainly can get one more inning out of him, maybe two, if he can have another one of those. Uh, That's a quick, bad easy swing innings. there. Pretty easy out. Yeah, early in a ball game, we get a lot of one-two pitch outs. Yeah, I think this is probably preferable yeah, if you're you, Ray Searage. Yeah, you, you got a lead, pitch to some contact, and go deeper in the ball game. Now the, the test would be if he got some scenarios going where he really needed to strike out. Could he get him? The only time that came in this game was when Holiday was at the plate in the fourth inning. Not the, it was a weak ground ball, but still the same. Infield in and what that anybody, so it scored a run. Trying to win his 19th game of the year. And that saws him off as well. Weekly hit to second. Well placed fastball on the thumbs. So what do I get now? Fly ball to center. Be interesting because Cruz has driven the ball deep to center field both times. First time sent Andrew McCutcheon back toward the wall, and then last time up, McCutcheon got back there, but maybe didn't realize he had a little bit more room before reaching the padded wall, and ball went off McCutcheon's glove for a double. There's a swing and a miss. Cruz trying to slow things down. Swing and miss. They let you take a walk. It looks like Cervelli wants this one. Again to center field. McCutcheon back. And off the wall. Tony Cruz has hit the ball as hard as anybody all three times up against Cole. It's all in the same spot. Cole can't believe it. <laughs> He's taken three times in a row, really? Now that one just six inches from the top of the fence. But I had him 0 2. And it was like he just was going to, like, okay, I'm going to throw a slider for a strike and see what he does with it. I got a big lead. He almost gave up another run because of that, which wouldn't have been the end of the world. But I mean, that's why you could do something like that and really pitch to contact because a, a single run is not going to uh, affect the outcome of the game. Uh, at least it shouldn't. Nice comfortable five run cushion. One and one on Brandon Moss, the pinch hitter for Sokolovich. That ball, you know, wasn't a lazy fly ball. Now the the pitch count gets up there a little bit. You have to throw to another guy. Maybe he'll be close to 100 pitches. This will be the last inning. Now if that would have been a fly out, he would have been down there what 92, 93 pitches, and might have been able to go back out for the for the eighth. It's his last regular season start, and of course, 
He is slated to pitch if necessary the wild card game on Wednesday. Well, with the, another game in a couple hours, you'd, you'd like to keep the bullpen out of this as long as possible. Of course, if the teams finish with identical records, there's a tiebreaker game on Monday. The loser goes to the wild card. If the, talking about the Pirates and the Cardinals, of course, they tie identical records. The tight breaker game would be here, right? Well, it depends on who wins the season series, and yeah, it would be because the Pirates, having forced a tie, would have won today and tonight, and then therefore winning the season series. Right now, the Cardinals have the edge, winning 9 of 17. Is the eighth pitch of this at bat for Brandon Moss. And probably the last pitch of the game for Garrett Cole. He gets his second strikeout. He said he, he likes these situations. Oh, he he had to come up big. He, he did. Up big and uh, you know, we were talking last inning about kind of pitching to contact a little bit today with him, especially after that grand slam, got himself a little bit of a lead and and just was able to fill up the strike zone. Nothing wrong with the stuff. In fact, that in fact that last pitch to Moss that was a fastball that was 97 that he got the swing and miss on. So he had plenty left in that gas tank. Just uh, did what he had to do this afternoon. There pulls line. Not officially out of the game yet. We're assuming. Yeah, 100 pitches. Uh, that's a, a further. pretty darn nice line. Seven innings, 100 pitches. That's about right. What you normally would see. The strikeouts, as uh, we talked about. Down a couple clicks, but no big deal. Wasn't like there was anything wrong. He just didn't didn't throw a lot of you know swing and miss bad breaking balls where he's going to get chases on. See the new battery, Mitch Harris and Travis Tartamella. There's the Pirates battery. Civilian Cole. Mike Matheny taking out Tony Cruz, maybe looking ahead to tonight. Figuring Cruz will catch both games and we'll assume that Cervelli will be back in there tonight. If the Pirates can get six more outs, they'll get that very important win and look for another one. Second half. Drops the ball. 
Committed his seventh there of the year on Monday, and that's number eight on the campaign. Nothing out of the ordinary about this. Just took a little bit of a uh, higher hop than he anticipated. Got it on the heel of the glove. Looking at some of these uh, the pitching numbers that I keep track of during the game, that that you, I know, just before you go any further, you keep track yes, of during the game. The, the, my notes that I take yeah. that somebody yeah. gives you. <laughs> but you know, I'm looking at it. first pitch strikes today. 75 percent of the time is through strike one. Now, that's a sign of you know somebody that's trying to be efficient, going after uh, going after contact. And another thing, twice as many ground outs as balls hit in the air. So, you know, it might have been his plan today is, you know, see how the game flows. Yeah. But at least early on, try to try to be efficient, get some quick outs. And it went perfect for him. Then he ended up getting the nice, comfortable lead and could just keep that throughout the game. Got his ground balls. Was very aggressive throwing uh, strikes early. Nice work, Bob. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. It's hard to keep track of all this stuff. It doesn't even look like your handwriting. Yeah. That's my handwriting. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. yeah, I got these little yellow things. In you my don't back. have those. those in my back. Post it notes. No, you don't. I call them yellow things. I, I, I noticed. Well, we want to thank Zach Scovira, who's stage managing his last game this season. Because he, he's going to be a thank married you, man. Zach. Yeah. Uh, uh, the truth be told, Zach does all that stuff, and he also has. Getting married up. Saturday, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Very a little good. nervous. Oh, he's yeah, ready to go, nervous, though. A little nervous. Yeah, uh, heading out, heading out of town afterwards. I hear. Going to Greece. Nice. Yeah, that, that mic doesn't work, just so you know. Not, yeah, not but he can nod his head. That's yeah. why I'm asking uh, yes or no answers. He can nod yes. You're waiting for a response. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> That's why I'm saying, oh, yeah, watch this. You're going to Greece, right? <laughs> See? See, all he has to do is nod. <laughs> why has he got the mic? I don't know who he talks to with that mic. Just for looks. <laughs> Congratulations, Zach. And thanks for your help all year long. Way to count these uh, swings and misses, by the way. And happy birthday to Tyler Graham, by the way. Happy birthday, Tyler. Associate Director. Chris Hebrank is celebrating her 60th birthday today as well from Jeanette. Watches all of the games. Happy birthday to Chris. Rick and Jenna Steele. Jason's parents. Steele Town. Associate producer, these folks are here at the ballpark. Towards center field, Jay plays a very shallow center, and he's able to make that catch. Two away. Yeah, they had an excellent break on that one. Time now for our Data Strong fan photo of the game brought to you by T Mobile. Monroeville Senior Citizen Center. A get well card for Chung Ho Gong. Thank you, Tara, for sending this and, uh, along to us. That is great. Chung Ho will appreciate that. From Mon Monroeville Senior Citizen Center. Sean Rodriguez is first at bat. Bastardo will be coming on for the eight.
one count on Sean Rodriguez. The second game of the doubleheader starting at 7.05 tonight will feature a left-hander Tyler Lyons for the Cardinals against Charlie Morton. Garrett Cole today goes seven innings. Before the rainout uh, yesterday was supposed to be the matchup of Waka and Morton and Lyons was to face Cole tonight with the rainout forcing this day night doubleheader. Clint Hurdle went with Cole in game one. Mike Matheny went with Waka in game one. So it'll be a Lions Morton matchup tonight. We don't know about Chris Stewart. We'll assume that uh, Cervelli catches the nightcap, but Meanwhile, Mitch Harris strikes out Sean Rodriguez. Six more outs. Authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The most popular way to follow the Pirates in the postseason is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, highlights, replay reviews, scores, stat casts, live radio broadcasts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat. Now. Right now, the Pirates are six outs away from this must win situation. Josh Harrison takes over at third base. From one must win spot. to another yeah. must win. Keeping it uh, in play. The division is essentially what they're doing here. Antonio Bastardo. Like, what do you get to do? What do you get for winning? You get to do it again. Winning, keep winning, keep winning. Well, Club Riddles Club did what it needed to do offensively. The Walker home run in the second, and after the Cardinals tied it at the top of the fourth. We well, hate to talk about you know the ifs and buts, but but <laughs> what if? Things would have been a little different on Monday. Can't do it. Can't go back. Bring it back. So after the Cardinals tied it in the top of the fourth, the Pirates scored five in the bottom of the fourth inning, highlighted by the Francisco Cervelli Grand Slam. Matt Carpenter homered in the sixth off of Cole. He has scored both Cardinal runs as he doubled, leading off the fourth. Cole will finish the season with a 260 ERA. 208 innings pitched.
Cardinal fans love seeing that. Adam Wainwright up in their bullpen. Antonio Bastardo takes care of Matt Carpenter to start the eighth. One up, one down. Nissan Road ahead. Look at game two starters. Lefty Tyler Lyons in there because of the injury to Carlos Martinez. And Charlie Morton on the hill looking for win number 10. Our game two coverage starts at 6 30. Tommy Pham bats for John Jay. Strikes. Well, yeah, with nobody on base, Bastardo's pace, he's throwing strikes and just kind of getting the ball and throw. But when somebody gets on base, he slows it down. Very valuable addition. It certainly seems bullpen. like when he has the quicker pace, to, he's a little bit better command of his pitches. Just, you know, something that you, you know, because there's nobody on, nobody in scoring position, maybe he's trying to be a little more aggressive, don't have to worry about the hit scoring a run. But, you know, it might not be the pace that does it, it might just be the fact there's nobody on base. Control is always a, kind of one of the issues you talk about when Antonio goes out there. Now early in the year, there was an awful lot of base on balls. But now, this second half of the season, much more in command and getting a lot more of these. Swings and misses. That fastball. A lot of times it says 92, 93, but hitters react to it like it's 97, 98. Swing right through it. Strike one on Matt Holliday. Singled in the tying run in the fourth. To the infield in. Oh, and two. Stay alive. He's grounded out twice and single to center. See McCutcheon out in center field. Just, just shading to right. This season. With nobody on base, Mastardo has walked seven batters. Of the 114 that he's faced, the base is empty. With runners on, he's walked 18, as opposed to the seven. The far fewer batters faced with men on. Tapped it back to the mound. Antonio Mastardo has a one, two, three, eight. The Pirates are three outs away. Keeping themselves relevant in the Central Division.
Ortiz incident. With shots from her Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl and October 20th they'll perform, be performing at Stage AE. And here is Adam Wainwright. When he ruptured his Achilles tendon in April, most assumed he was done for the year. He makes his first relief appearance since the 2006 World Series, 221 straight starts since that World Series in 2006. Adam Wainwright back on the hill. Capturing the moment. Wainwright was at the plate against the Brewers and ruptured the Achilles while batting April the 25th. It just, then it, it just it looked totally normal. Yeah. If I remember right, just kind of started running toward mm -hmm. first. And something happened. And he strikes out the first batter he faces upon his return. Francisco Cervelli. Oh, right on the edge. 7 2 4 pitch. Tommy Pham stays in the game. He's in center. Toward right center field. And Hayward makes another fine catch. Robbing Mercer. Jason Hayward made a great catch on a ball hit by Josh Harrison leading off the seventh inning on Monday that could have turned the game. Just inches off the grass. Got the gold label on the back of his glove. Has it there for a reason? First at bat for Josh Harrison, and 95 from Adam Wainwright. Jared Hughes going to pitch the ninth. They were, uh, Wainwright became vice president of the band, the DH fan club, when after the incident, shortly after Max Scherzer, who got hurt while batting, hurt his thumb, Wainwright said, I couldn't disagree more. I love Max, but I just think baseball is a National League game. I wish both leagues would convert to National League baseball. The strategy and the game itself in the National League, just a better game. And so I hope, I hope people don't look at this, the injury, and think we should switch to a DH for pitchers. Well, it had nothing to do with him hitting. As except for, it was just he went to run. But I am extremely happy to hear somebody stand up like that and there's somebody that really has some weight behind his voice and and say the things that need to be said. Maybe you can get Adam Wainwright to sign that. I guess I shouldn't have elected him your nominated him your vice president before I asked you. No, no, In fact, I right. thought that's I fine. was a member of your cabinet. I that's guess I'm press fine. secretary. Commissioner. <laughs> well, thanks for the thought, but uh, oh. Oh. I don't know about commissioner. Huh? I think you'd be a good one. Yeah. 
I'm kind of I'm setting my ways too much. I mean, there are some things you have to be able to think of the future with. It's all about their game, the kids. But I want the kids to learn how to play. Not how to just sit in the dugout all day and get to hit three times. Sit well towards center field. Tommy Pham turns the wrong way, and that'll cost him a chance to make the catch. So Josh Harrison into second base with a double. I think Pham thought he was going to get a slicer off the right hand hitter's bat. Well, pretty much stayed straight. Like that, Greg. It almost looks like that ball hooked a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Kind of like when you're watching one of those PGA events yeah. and you see him hit it, and yeah. you're thinking, oh, he hit that way right, and that's right down the middle because you didn't see the uh, little draw he put on the ball. Uh, Jay he put a little draw on that one. Twenty seventh double. Here's Gregory Polanco. He hits now for the Pirates. Hit toward right. Under the glove of Wong. And the Pirates take an 8-2 lead. Gregory Polanco with his second hit. A couple of ribbies. Ground ball. Just nicked the glade. Didn't have the glove down far enough. Got underneath it. Wasn't wide of it. He got to that ball. Just didn't reach down quite far enough. Deep short. And he out recorded at second base. Pirates pick up another run. Jared Hughes looks for three outs. Bucks up 8-2. in Pineville and in West Virginia. Thanks for watching and rooting on your Pittsburgh Pirates. All of us at Root Sports and the Pirates appreciate your support. All the folks in the Pineville area of West Virginia. Well, make up double header. Pirates winning 8 to 2 currently heading to the ninth. Trying to tell the Cardinals not to celebrate just yet in their house. The Cardinals will be traveling to Atlanta day off tomorrow for both the Pirates and the Cardinals. Hawks will host the Reds starting Friday night. Cardinals travel to Atlanta.
Here's faces Jason Hayward. Faced one hitter on Sunday, got Chris Bryant to fly out. And bounce towards second. One down. Yeah, nice job. Nothing tricky to show that sinker for strikes. This series will wrap up tonight. Second game of the day night doubleheader. Coverage starts at 6.30 with Pirates pregame. Presented by W.B. Mason here on Route Sports. First Pirates game. Came to see a good one. After being shut out in back to back games, the finale at Wrigley, the first game of the series here Monday, lead 9 to 2. Bucks look to go 21 and 9 in their last 30 games played against the Cardinals here in Pittsburgh. 28 home runs. That is a foul ball. <laughs> Scrambling Cervelli. He did everything he could. <laughs> Smiling. Watching <laughs> Cervelli argue with that. He scooped up a bunch of chalk. Trying to, make <laughs> yeah, a, trying, to, trying to make like a cloud of dust <laughs> so that they wouldn't really able, be able to see where it was. <laughs> that was close, though. So almost got there in time. <laughs> All right, fire enough now with this count two and two. Low sinker, get a ground ball. Put it on the plate. There we go. Oh, nobody there. Yeah, I saw the umpire, Greg, on the black shirt, thought it was second baseman. Four. That was Walker sent there. I did too. Yeah. Towards center. Two outs. <laughs> Official paid attendance 29,747 for this first game. And one out away. Putting a little more pressure on the Cardinals, and what a big second game it's going to be. Bolton Wong to the plate. Bucks doing what they have to do. Must win out. Must win game one. Leading eight to two. Tapper 
Harris in the bare hand. Oh, yeah, raise it. Raise the Jolly Roger. Bucks are still in it. Jared Cole wins his 19th. Neil Walker and Francisco Cervelli go deep. Cervelli, the grand slam. Yeah, they certainly did do what they needed. Greg, a little of everything. Nice, solid pitching effort. Offense came up uh, with some important hits. Obviously, Cervelli's uh, the big one, the grand slam. After the intentional walk, putting four runs up on the board with one swing of the bat. That, uh, the play of the game. Full day of baseball here in the Berg and a big one to come later tonight. Lots to talk about from game one. We'll go out to Robin Teak. Greg and Bob, thank you very much. And it remains a big one tonight, Teak, because of this victory here today. And there will be no celebration for at least five or six more hours <laughs> on this field as the Pirates trying to keep the Cardinals at bay from winning the division. Of course, Pirates still want to win the division themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when you're a player and you've gone down through 158 games and got you know, four, or excuse me, 157 games. You got four more to go. Uh, yeah, indeed, you still, although the, the chances are slim, as a player, you know that you want to do everything you can to be able to put yourself in a position to still try to win this division. The Pirates have moved one step for, closer to that uh, this afternoon. And, of course, today was 158th game, only four remaining after this one. The Pirates still alive as they pick up their 96th victory of the season. A big reason why Francisco Cervelli standing by with Robbie Inzbikowski. A huge day from Francisco Cervelli. He hits a grand slam. Then he follows that up with a double. What an afternoon. Francisco, the big story, though, with this team. You're still alive. The Cardinals' magic number is still a two. Why does this team believe? Because anything can happen in baseball. Uh, we got to keep playing and then until the end. You took a couple foul tips. You have a Band-Aid on your ear right now. You took another one after that. How are you feeling? Well, I feel better after I hit a grand slam, so it doesn't matter what happened before. I look at everybody excited. Why was Garrett Cole so good today? He, he, he got power. He can look at it. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just great. It's one of the base in, be in baseball. Beating the Cardinals twice in one day is not going to be an easy challenge. You're talking a team that's going to go over 100 wins. What will it take to win tonight? Well, we want to win 102, so it's, it's going to be tough for both. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you. How about that, Rob? Francisco Cervelli. Think these fans like him here in the North Shore? Robbie, thank you very much. Yeah, great stuff from Francisco Cervelli, not only offensively, but also, of course, catching Garrett Cole, Tiku, picked up his 19th victory today. Very efficiently getting through seven innings, setting up the bullpen for the second game with the doubleheader, but most importantly, winning a game that was a must-win game for the Pirates. Who do you pitch when you need to win a game? You pitch Garrett Cole, and uh, that's exactly uh, you know, what happened today. You pitch him in game one. This is a game that night. Game two means nothing if you don't win game one. You pitch him today. He not only goes out there and pitches a strong seven innings, but he does it very efficiently. It was almost like, oh, yeah, I have to pitch a good game. Plus, you know what? I want to leave as much of the bullpen as possible available for Charlie Morton and for Clint Hurdle in the second game so that Charlie can go as hard as he can, as long as he can. So Cole not only accomplished his mission one, winning the game, but number two, the second mission was he didn't use anybody to go at all out of the bullpen. So therefore, the big guys at the back end are still available for the next ball game. Pirates win by the final score of 8-2. to two. They cut that lead back to three games with four to go. Magic number remains two for the Cardinals after the first game of this doubleheader. Coming up, extended highlights, post-game reaction, a look forward to game two. All that and more when Tika and I return after this.